everyone. I hope you've had a wonderful evening. My name is Bekama and you're listening to the Good Citizen Radio Show. The show is brought to you by CSR in Action. It's sponsored by ACT Foundation, a.k.a. ACT Foundation, which is a grant-giving organization established in 2016 to sponsor um, or rather to provide grants to regional organizations um, in the areas of health, education, entrepreneurship and leadership. And of course, the Good Citizen Radio Show is a leadership initiative to drive active citizenship amongst us Nigerians. Um, so before we go on, I'd like to announce that the ACT Foundation would be hosting its third annual dialogue themed social and global impact, engaging for growth. The theme seeks to address issues bothering on the growth and development of communities across Africa and how meaningful impact can be achieved and sustained in spite of the prevalent challenges to these development issues. The date is Thursday, 25th July, 2019, and it's happening at the Lagos Continental Hotel at 9 a.m. But you remember that you have to register before you're allowed in, so hurry now, go to HTTPS. Um, call on double slash act or actrustfoundation.org forward slash breakfast underscore dialogue underscore 2019. Again, it's https colon double f- slash actrustfoundation.org slash breakfast underscore dialogue 2019 to register to attend this wonderful um program that will be attended by decision makers and all the key practitioners in the social, private and public sectors. Today we're going to be talking about something that's very, very important. I mean, if you think about the SDGs or you think about the most sponsored area for businesses in Nigeria and across the world, um, think of education. So we're looking at basic education as a panacea to unemployment. In December 2018, the National Bureau of Statistics reveal that Nigeria's unemployment rate had actually increased to 23.1%, an all-time high from the average between 2016 or and 20, 2006 and 2018, which was about 12.31%. Um, so this was in the third quarter of 2018. To look at the definition, the National Bureau of Statistics has defined unemployment and an unemployed individual to mean an individual who falls between um, the ages of 15 and 24, is willing and capable of working for a minimum of 40 hours per week, but has no work to do. Being underemployed, on the other hand, implies that the person uh, um, can work or has worked for less than 40 hours per week, um, even if she, he or she has the capacity to do more. In Nigeria, the unemployment rate measures the number of people actively looking for jobs as a percentage of the labor force. Now, despite the growing levels of unemployment in Nigeria, um, I think it's sad to say that skills development is still not at, as at the forefront as it should be in Nigeria. It's very um, disheartening that our vocational institutes do not get the sort of support that they need. Um, we've discussed stigmatization on the show before and, you know, my heart breaks when I think about countries like the UK and the US where uh, plumbers and so well that um, you actually want to leave your white collar job and join them. But then in Nigeria, the average school leaver still dreams about a, attending a higher institution to study any of the popular courses Um, So our transition towards a market economy is actually placing demands for new skills and trades, making it difficult for people with obsolete knowledge, skills and and work attitudes to retain their jobs. Rapid technological changes make certain skills go into extinction and demand higher levels of initiative and learning. And this is why today we have a very special guest um, who will talk to us about how we can use education to solve our problems. She is a boss lady, George Oga. Welcome to, I hope, I hope I pronounced that right. And I know a veteran journalist said to me, you shouldn't be asking on the show, I hope I pronounced this right. So, 
Bosse, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, so, Bekeme. Bosse is a long time associate <laughs> friend. <laughs> um, but, and she's also a tri sector leader with over 15 years' experience working across the non profit, private, and public sectors as a development professional. And she's currently a big lady with the LSETF, the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, as the Director of Strategy, Funding, and Stakeholder Management, where she's responsible for coordinating the key enablers that aid program implementation in the fulfillment of the fund's mandate to create jobs in Africa's largest city. Now, before I go on, I want to remind you that you should call us on 0700 939393. Again, it's 0700 939393 um, to engage in this discussion. Um, I'm not going to give us our WhatsApp number because it seems to confuse people. People start calling the WhatsApp number. Um, so I'll give you that at the end of the show so that you can continue the, um, the discussion. Remember that when you're calling, please focus on the discussion at hand. No, oh, is this person that is bad? Is this person that is good? We just want us to focus on, you know, solutions to um, what we know uh, we have as problems in Nigeria. You can watch live at ifm923.com slash watch dash live. Bosse, you know that um, you know the situation in Nigeria. What what do you think is the major problem that's causing unemployment in our dear country? <sighs> so, like that's the million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's interesting, but um, unemployment is actually not just Nigeria's problem. It's actually the world's largest or most important socioeconomic challenge mm, actually mm. um but of course africa because of its population now the statistics that you gave earlier when you break it down further mm-hmm. it actually says that 55.4 percent of that number mm. of that 23 percent are young people between the ages of 15 and 35 55 percent of that 23 percent wow. are between the ages of 15 and 34 right right so it tells you that even larger is the challenge of youth unemployment, mm. right? And that's why I really like what we're talking about today because, you know, young people are going or getting an education today mm. as a pathway to, you know, get a job or earn an income in future, mm. right? But now the question is, what education are you getting, right? right. So the question you asked me about, what do I think the major challenge is that is causing youth unemployment? Now, to be honest, the truth is there is a role for everybody to play. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So starting with government, right? Um, The truth is the economy helps to drive jobs. And depending on what the policies are that you're driving, it helps to drive jobs. And I I mean, if I can speak about the work that we're doing at the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, Mm -hmm. I definitely think that it has validated that when government is committed to solving this challenge, it is possible for it to be solved. Right. And so when you start to think about what we're doing, so you're trying to create jobs. Mm -hmm. How do you create jobs? Who are the people that create jobs, right? Small businesses, Mm. right? And how can they create jobs? Give them access to finance so they can grow their businesses, they can expand their businesses Mm -hmm. and need to hire more people, right? So that's the first one. The second one is skills, which you started to speak about. All of us want to be you know, doctors and lawyers and all of that. We want to have white collar jobs. But as you were saying, in Europe and all these countries, for you to even call out a plumber, Mm -hmm. there's a call out fee. Right. So even if he got to your house Mm -hmm. and, you know, he just turned the tap, right, and that solved your problem, you would pay him a fee. And they don't usually have tertiary education. Exactly. So it then tells you, that we have misplaced priorities, for Mm -hmm. lack of a better way to put it. Mm -hmm. Because if the skill or the education you're getting Mm -hmm. is not going to get you a job, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a valid question Mm -hmm. and one that we should really engage with. Yes. So um, when I start to think about what we're doing with employability, right, Mm -hmm. it's matching demand and supply. So there's always a job. That's Mm -hmm. what I tell people. There are always vacancies. Mm -hmm. The question is whether you have the relevant skills. Mm -hmm. To actually take up that opportunity, mm. right? So if you've gone to study something that is not applicable or is not relevant, you know, with the rules that are out there, then perhaps you should upskill yourself, right? Mm. So it's about identifying what the relevant skills are in 
in whatever field or whatever sector it is that you are in and then match that with the roles right mm-hmm. so there's there's a deliberate um effort mm-hmm. towards matching supply and demand of skills right right that if young people and i mean we all know um that there is a perception challenge here isn't there mm. so we all think that white collar jobs is the pathway mm-hmm. but i mean it's if a you, safe way is it well yeah so it's a safe way and i guess our parents current contributed yes. to that, didn't they? <laughs> um, God bless them. <laughs> they didn't know better. Um, but the point is, only if we knew that there's several pathways, right? Yes. And that people are making money doing almost everything. Yes. Exactly. So, I mean, again, I definitely think that the question around why is there unemployment like i said government has a role to play yes um creating an enabling environment and just being an, a facilitator of jobs right but then also as individuals you know getting an education we need to sort of um reorientate ourselves what that means okay i agree now as you were speaking some things came to mind um over the course of the years i've engaged lagos states and um, vocational institutes and I've also, I mean, considering the line of work that I do, I've also met with other people who are driving skills acquisition in different ways. And I've come to realize a couple of things. Firstly, um, it's a quality of training that they get. Um, I noticed that the training that's provided by the smaller institutes seem to be more results focused rather than okay just come and attend the training course for for a while and this is not in reference to Lagos because I I did see that they were taking their time and training people as as long as nine months, twelve months. I was very impressed. Okay. And then there's also the attitude of the people who get trained. Now I have a number of artisans working with me. I've had I've you know I've had a housing project. Um, I have an office, they have to do repairs and I find that the typical Nigerian um, worker, especially blue collar worker, doesn't have the right attitude to work. So they come to you, you give them a contract, and they don't see any big deal about breaking any agreements, not turning up. <laughs> so I'm wondering, I'm like, these guys don't seem like like it seems like there's plenty where they're coming from. Like there's no, there doesn't seem to be any real drive, and you're okay to let it go. So. You know, so what What exactly, do you think that, you know, are training materials obsolete? Um, should the education not consist, even if you're going for um, a professional education or a vocational skill, should you not include training around the softer Soft skills? skills? But before you answer that question, we'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. Art Foundation is an indigenous grant-making non-profit organization committed to making positive impact by leveraging partnerships to support local, national, and regional non-profit organizations working to address challenges in areas of health, entrepreneurship, environment, and leadership. We work with NGOs, CBOs, and social enterprises implementing impactful and sustainable community-based initiatives across Africa. Visit our website, www.actrustfoundation.org. The Good Citizen Radio Show is proudly sponsored by Act Foundation. Partnering for sustainable development. Okay, so we're back from our break. Bossa, shoot. Okay, so the question was um, soft skills. Um, an obsolete training material. An obsolete training material. So the truth is, um, when you start to think about blue collar work and skills development generally, first of all, the curriculum is very important, right? Mm. And that curriculum, again, must be updated if it's obsolete. So mm. I think it's being deliberate about the fact that, mm. well, some skills are, or, or some knowledge or the curriculum might be obsolete. How do we upgrade this? So if you think about sort of the work that we're doing in employability, mm-hmm. um, first of all, what's very interesting is we've gone to the industry, right? Which is what's unique. Mm-hmm. So... When you identify the sectors where there are jobs, so think about Lagos, construction, right? That's a high growth sector. Mm -hmm. But then you go and meet the industry, right, in that sector and say, what are the gaps? Some of the things you started speaking to, so masonry, plumbing, Mm -hmm. right? But then the plumbing of 10 years ago is not what they're doing in plumbing today. So it's very important that whatever training you are doing is in line with current 
skills mm-hmm. and a current cur- curriculum. Mm-hmm. But what's very interesting, I think, about what we do is our trainings are a maximum of eight, eight weeks, uh, 12 weeks. And that's three months. Why? Because the end game is a job. So just in line with what you were saying. And it doesn't mean that they're not trained, but I'll tell you what the difference is. It's 70% practical. Okay. Right? So it's you, if you were training to be a plumber, you are on site doing the work. Yes. Right? But then most importantly, there's a soft skills training to complement that. It is part of the curriculum. Because as you said, evidence shows actually that a lot of people, um, after they get the technical skills, what will make them either not get a job or lose the job if they get one is actually the soft skills. Things like time management, customer service, right? Temperaments and things like that. So it's very important that when we are upskilling people mm-hmm. or doing any skills development training, we actually complement the hard and the soft skills. So before I ask you a question, I want to remind callers, we've just missed a couple of calls. So the number to call, remember, you can call back at 0793-9393. Again, it's 0793-9393. We have a caller. Hello? Hello? Okay, so we've missed that call so you were speaking to the fact that you train for a maximum of three months are you training people who already have some skills because it does seem to me like it speaks to the nigerian quick quick let's turn this around sharp sharp because for instance if you speak about um masonry or tiling or any of those skills they're actually specialized skills and when i spoke to some of the people who worked for us on our on, on our housing project um, I was told that the reason why we don't get a lot of Nigerians in the specialized jobs like tiling is that we train for six months and they were saying six months and we think that we know it and we want to jump right in and start doing and know and that you need time and experience to grow into it before you are allowed to lead on I, any job. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you said any job, mm. right? But there is learning on the job. Now, what's most important is our... Uh, selection process. I think that's the the main thing, right? And you ask, are there people? Are they people who already have skills? Mm. They're people who we can verify through our selection process have the ability to learn in a certain way, right? So you if you start to think, hello, hello, good evening. Hi, and Didi. Good evening. How's your day going? <laughs> I'm good, are you? Everything is great, thanks. So what's up? What's your take? Good evening, good evening, ma. Do you mind this video of Mrs. Sam? Try to remember. No, good evening. Hi, it's Bosse. Happy Friday to you. Same to you. Skills is very, very important. Because even my, even myself, I'm trying to learn a new skill. What do you do, Didi? Oh, I'm an administrator by profession. Okay, so what kind of skill are you looking to learn? Yeah, actually, that I, you should, I want to learn how to either to or how to start making hair. You understand? Mm-hmm. That can add to what I do professionally. Okay. Because I'm still as a practical one from my younger brother who finished seven last year. Mm-hmm. Why he was He's an accountant. Okay. So while he was serving, he has tried the whole year serving to learn how to sew. Okay. So today he's, uh, he hasn't gotten it. But the fashion designing skill he learned has kept him going. Mm. Great. He has, kept, he has not been idle. Mm. You can imagine if I had the opportunity while I was saving, I also used that time to do to learn a skill. It would have been it would have profited me so much. Thank it's you. It's very important. No matter the profession, somebody should have another kind of skill. I that agree. That's the one profession. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you so yeah. much, Indy. Thanks. As always, she's one of our most prolific <laughs> callers, as she nice. always makes the most sense. Hello? Hello? Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. What's your name? My name is Temi Tokwe Aloba. Hi, Temi Tokwe. Is this your first time on the Good Citizen Radio Show? This is not my first time, actually. Okay, but thanks for calling back. So what's up? What's your take on this discussion? 
Yes. Um, I think one of the reasons or one of the factors that contribute to unemployment, particularly mm. in Nigeria, is because, one, people are underemployed. Mm. So in the midst of unemployment, there is also... Underemployment. Uh, in a situation whereby you see one person doing like three, four, five people jobs in a in a developed country, you see people work for hours. So I can work for three hours while other people pick up that job. So in Nigeria, we have few number of people doing a lot of jobs. So we don't even have work life balance. I get to my point. I get that, but I think that that's the same in many other countries. Um, so I worked, I lived briefly in the UK, and I know that um, sometimes I'll be on the train and I'll meet somebody who had worked through the night and was literally just sleeping his way through to another job. So he's he's left his other job at three a.m. and he's sleeping on the train to start another job at five. So another job at five. Yes. Well, I, I I just feel that if 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 job can be uh, workload can be evenly. Uh, distributed, distributed to some extent, exactly because looking at our population, our population is rising, and we have uh, a limited number of jobs to actually go around. To some extent, the employers should at least, you know, try to help people. You know, there is, there, there are ways you can actually skill these jobs. I, I, I'm also very honest with you. Why I know that yes, this might be this this uh, a similar issue in some other countries, but I think Nigeria's one is just too outrageous. That is number one. Okay. Then number two. Number so two, we'll have to people. right. We, okay. 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 We'll okay. have to yes, because we'll have to allow others to call. But I get your point. I get your point. Thank you so much, Jimmy Tokwe, for calling. Um, so yes, I agree with most of what he said. But you know, my I'm thinking, could it be that people? And if you can answer this quickly, so do a final question before we end. Um, I do think that the reason why some people seem to do all the work is that they have the right attitude and the right skills. Um, Because I've had people just literally walking and out of our office. So the first time you chastise them for something that they've done wrong, they mentally just, yes, they They just break, they switch off. And before you know it, they're gone. And then the problem is that subsequently they're reaching out to you and saying, oh, I'm finding it difficult in life and blah, 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 help me. So how do you help a person who's not willing to work, like literally take the stress of a job? So yes, you are, it's like, I say it's like apprenticeship. So Mm. you go to a place, you're learning, you haven't learned yet. Um, People should, you know, find the patience to learn before, you know, wanting to be the boss. Yep. Um, there's a reason why, and, and this is, you know, probably something that many would not like to hear. There's a reason why, for instance, in some countries like UAE, they do not employ Nigerians for blue collar work because we tend to feel like we're a bit big for many things. And I'm surprised that things like Uber has picked up in Nigeria because I would have thought that the average Nigerian would be like, no, please, I'm too posh mm. to do this. So um, do you think that's perhaps the situation? So, you know, I think that Nigerians are hardworking and committed, but I think perception is our greatest challenge. So mm. I think when people know, so when you know your friend picked up Uber and you see that they're making money, Whatever perception it is that you had, you kind of put that to the side. Do you right. see what I'm trying to so, say? So, yes, by proofs, then people then... Then our graduates doing right. um, motorcycle business. Right. For lack of calling a brand name. Yeah. So, and that's it. When they realize that there's money, because at the end of the day, where we're headed is to get a skill that actually gives you access to an income, right? Like you said, you're able to work for 40 hours a week doing something that actually earns you money and that's what's most important but we've been caught up in professions right but the most important thing like the caller said about her um her brother is the fact that he got a skill that is allowing him to earn income thank you so i mean what i hear from you is people need to um go through i mean when they when people go through training they need to try to work with it um they need to have the patience to learn to grow, uh, to pursue the opportunities and to use their soft skills. Um, so young people out there, um, it's really yours for the taking. There are opportunities 
you probably think that they aren't enough. One of the challenges being financing and all of that. But um, I think that they can take advantage of what we have out there and the other parties, the government, private sector organizations need to find ways of rolling out initiatives that can be measured for impact. It's not just about starting a vocational institute, but you have to consider that impact is being made um, through qualitative and quantitative data. So thank you all for listening to that discussion. Thank you again, Bosse, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, We have a date again next week, Friday at 8 p.m. And thank you all for those callers who called. You've won yourselves free Domino's pizza. Um, You get a free bottle of Coke as well when you order any extra yummy, juicy, classic, medium-sized pizza at Domino's.ng. The show was brought to you by CSR in Action and sponsored by ACT Foundation. Have yourselves a great weekend. Bye-bye.